642, we're going to go back and start the council meeting for tonight. Uh, Alan, you want to open some prayer again? Jesus, you've been so good to us, Lord. Forgive us of our sins and help us to do your work and your business. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Roll call. Roll call. Jimmy Clark? Here. Chris Fuller? Here. Alan Moore? Here. Somebody want to read the minutes that we just did so we make sure we got them right? Jimmy? Yeah, I can. January 30th, 2023, regular city. Is that the right one? No, I put the wrong date on it. Change the date. You going to go fix that right quick before we sign it? Let me read them up. Go ahead and read them because everything else is right. She's got to change the date. Uh, Mayor Pyre called the meeting to order at 606. Opening prayer was led by Allen. Pledge of Allegiance led by Mayor Pilot. Agenda 1, roll call of members present were Jimmy, Chris, and Allen. Agenda 2, present. Uh, present the January 30th. Well, it's going you know, to say the new one. That needs to say the new one, too. Yeah. Regular meeting minutes. Jimmy Clark read the minutes to the council. Jimmy made a motion to accept the minutes. Allen second the motion. Motion passed three to all. Three zero all in favor. Agenda three, accept resignation letter of Michael Lesher. Jimmy read the letter to council. Jimmy made a motion to accept the resignation letter of Michael Lesher. Chris Fuller seconded it. It passed three zero. Agenda four, updating signature cards for police seize fund accounts ended in 8741 and 4877. Jimmy made a motion to add Greg Harmon, Billy Poller, Brenda Wilson, and Dustin Bizzle to the accounts ended in 8741 and 4877. These will be the only signatures allowed on these accounts. Chris second the motion. Motion passed 3 0. Agenda five, Allen made a motion to add Greg Harmon to the Arbus credit card and remove Michael Lesher. Jimmy second the motion. Motion passed unanimous 3 0. Uh, there's going to be more than that on the removal, wasn't there? I don't have that sheet, but what, look at y'all's sheet. Wasn't there more than Michael Lester coming off? Uh, Redford. Redford, yeah. Let me go ahead and get that fixed. Just a second. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, wait a minute. That's on the, that's on the gas. Redford, oh, that's okay. Yeah, that's right. That's on the gas. That's on the gas. I'm sorry. We're good then. Yeah. And then Chris made a motion to add Greg Harmon and remove Michael Lesher and Richard Redford from the WEX. Okay. Card. That's got it right. Here. Yeah. Jimmy second the motion. Motion passed in Ammons 3 0. Chris made a motion to adjourn at 6 17. Allen second the motion. Motion passed at 3 0. Okay. And the new date says February 21st in both locations. Okay. Billy, uh, on this right here, we made a motion to accept the resignation, and we're going to further discuss the letter. Well, we didn't have, we're not. We're not, we're not to that yet. We're not to that we're right. I know that, but I'm just saying, I, I was just clarifying that because it reads we accepted the letter as it was written on the same one, so. Well, that was his letter of resignation. Okay. Because we got to discuss that in this meeting. Right, okay. I but see. I see what you're saying. Yeah. It's, I do. Yeah. You want, do you want that changed? No, no, I don't want to change it. I just want to note it publicly that we accepted the resignation and then we're going to do what's right on the. Discuss uh, that, yeah. Yes. Do you want to make a footnote on that? Everybody sign or you want to leave it like it's written? Just leave it like it's written. Okay. Got a motion and a second? You have a motion and a second? Got a motion on a second. Yeah. Need a second. Who made the motion? Uh, Jimmy made the motion. No. You made the motion. You didn't I make the motion. I'll make the motion. Sorry, I didn't. I'll second. Chris, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I just read it. Okay. 
Next on the agenda, uh, Ordinance 2301, the third reading. I make a motion to do a short reading. Do I have a second? I'll second it. All in favor? Uh, uh. I just need to read the top part, right? Yes. Go ahead and start reading. All right, this is a City of Linwood, Linwood Water and Sewer Ordinance Number 2301. It's an ordinance permitting the City of Linwood, High County, Arkansas, of Linwood Water and Sewer to make purchases and provide services or conduct business from a business owned by the Mayor of the City of Linwood, directly or indirectly, to declare an emergency and for other purposes. Yeah, it actually didn't use the emergency clause in it because this is the third meeting in the third reading. Can we have discussion on that? Yeah. Uh, what I would like to see us do, if it's okay with you guys, obviously, is just to keep, just to keep it down, just to keep it to where it don't. Uh, and I'll try to make this break. Let's say June of last year we done X number of dollars at a certain business, and Lyler's being the one at top of it now. And then this year we do a big project, and we realize we can order stuff from one of his suppliers, we can save a lot of money, so all of a sudden we're running, buying a larger item there, so you're looking at, we might have spent 1000 last year in June, but we're spending 28000 this year in June, and I would like to see a councilman sign off on the Plyler ticket before the check is issued. Don't think it's necessary, but I think it would be really nice in the event that someone alleges any misdeeds at any point. Why don't so, you? With that being said, if you vote on that motion, then just put that in the motion in a separate motion because it don't need to be on. The, if y'all want it in a separate motion, I'm fine with that. Cause this is, just vote on the ordinance and then vote on your motion, please. Do it. Can we do it that way? That way, I keep it clear. I don't care. I'm, I just I'm not going to be the one to do it because I work there, so it's kind of a convention. So, as far as I'm concerned, so. Okay. Mayor Jimmy, I'll be glad to do it if you want me to. But, well, you have three other councilmen besides Chris. Yeah. That's fine to do that. You have three other councilmen yeah. besides yeah. Chris or me. Okay. Uh, do I have a motion to accept the reading, third reading of Ordinance 2301? Short reading. Short reading. I'll make a motion that we accept. It. Okay, second? Yes, sir. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Now, do you want to put that in form of motion on what you just said? I'm fine. I don't, that's fine with me. Yeah. Uh, just for the protection of both parties, uh, I would like to make a motion that a councilman, which Chris said he's out mm -hmm. and for obvious reasons, a councilman yeah. signs okay. off on the Plyler ticket before Brenda issues the check. Which we're already going to have two signatures on there anyway, but just that independently, because we're going to be aware of certain projects going on, you know, other information that some people might not be that privy to. That's you know, and that way, look, that way it looks clean, transparent, and above board. And I just think it's a good thing. So I'll make that motion. Yeah, I'll, I'll make that motion. Have a second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Uh Aye. -huh. Uh -huh. Okay. Approved. <coughs> okay. Next, Tanner, what do you call that? I'm good. Okay. Next on the agenda, we've got an account that's dormant. Brenda, this is a meter deposit account that was from 1982. Okay. <laughs> that there's money left in and no activity on, wow. and mm -hmm. it's got fourteen hundred dollars in it. And would like a motion to move that money. This is what the auditors want us to do: move that money into a water, general sure. water and sewer sure. revenue account. How much was it? $1,400. That account is old as I am. It's, and it's not, the bank's going to kick it out because it's dormant again. So we just need to move that money into the operating money of the, or the revenue account of the Water and Sewer Department. It's dormant. It's, yeah, it's dormant. What did I say? Okay, dormant. Whatever I said, it's dormant. I'd make a motion we move that money. Have a second? I second, second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Okay, we had two people that said they were interested in being a city councilman. Do y'all want their autumn samples and carry Brandy? Is autumn here? Huh? Brady. Brady. Carrie Brady. 
I can dyslexic anything, man. No, you didn't dyslexic. You just added a letter. Oh. <laughs> you were thinking of your daughter. Oh, Brandy, I guess. Okay, Brandy. Okay. Uh, we have a letter <coughs> from Kerry. Kerry, you want to explain a little bit of, <coughs> tell everybody a little bit about you? We've lived here going on seven years. In that time, we've opened two different businesses. Um, my Collective House Boutique and um, most recently the Blue Lily Cafe. Um, I'm on the um, board with the Chamber of Commerce and I'm on the um, I'm on leadership council for the Hall and Pike and Montgomery counties as well. And I'm on the Glenwood Revitalization Committee. And it just kind of fits to do this as well. So everything that we're working for, towards getting Glenwood revitalized and beautified, kind of goes all together with City Council as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And you did say the call? Yes. Yeah, that's a beautiful program. It is. That are the two that have sent a letter in once here to speak tonight, one is not. That's been the only interest so far we've had in the job. Does the council wish to take any action? Are you on the way to what you're on the way? I make a motion that we appoint Miss Brady. Do you have a second? I second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Sir, you want to show your wife in? <laughs> Not that. Uh, yeah, we'll get her up here. Raise your right hand. All right, Carrie Ann Brady. I, Carrie Ann Brady. Do solemnly affirm. Do solemnly affirm that I will support the Constitution. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. The United States and the Constitution of. And the Constitution of the State of Arkansas. The State of Arkansas. And I will faithfully discharge. And I will faithfully discharge the complete. The complete duties, duties of the councilman. Of the councilman or councilwoman. Or councilwoman. Beginning February twenty-first. Beginning February twenty-first. Twenty twenty-three. Twenty twenty-three. Of the city of Glenwood, of the city of Glenwood for this date, for this date of February 21st, of February, 2023, of February 21st, 2023, upon which I am to enter. Upon which I am to enter. Okay. okay. Yep. Yeah, sorry. Congratulations. Thank you. <clears throat> Jimmy, would you share notes with her? Since we don't have notes to yes, her tonight, please. Maybe that's a good one. put You get to move up there. You get to move up there. They put you right to work. All right. Next on the agenda, we need to vote on uh, David and Saren Sweeney Fireworks. They're the ones that set up at the rest area, by the rest area out there. We are in the process of selling that land, uh, releasing that land with option to purchase. And I've talked to TJ and his other partner on this. If we'll bush hog the property, which we should have done, he said the city can keep the revenue off of that if you allow them to go out there again this year. They're asking that we bush hog the property they're buying, which we should have had bush hogged already. In this Is time. this the last year probably the fireworks will be out there? Or? That will be... Their decision. If they build out there, it will be. If they yes, build, start building on the front, it will be. But okay. we would have to. If they're going to not build on the front, it still need to be built before the council and approved. If they come back, but it'll be this year. Be everything is normal. And TJ, we have talked to you, and that is your agreement, right? Yes. So do I have a motion that we accept uh, A1 discount fireworks under the same? I'll make that motion. Sounds very generous to me. I second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, did I hear the young lady? Yes, yeah, she did. <laughs> okay. Okay. Joe Patrick. Uh, 
I came before this council a couple of years ago and wanted permission to put a pickleball court over in the tennis court and work it out. And they gave me permission to do that. And uh, nobody's ever gone to play pickleball except kids that come over from Dallas to visit. And uh, it's becoming such a big thing everywhere. Like Mount Ida has a pickleball workshop this weekend with 30 people in it. Hot Springs has tournaments. It's everywhere. I travel around and I see it. And I wasn't getting up here to talk about pickleball tonight so much as the park. But that's part of it. And uh, I just remarked it today. The only person I ever called was somebody who was passing through from Florida. Can you give me a lesson? I said, yeah, I got it posted down at the grocery store in Spanish and English. That's the only person I ever called. But what I'm saying is that this sport is taking off and it appeals to the older generation because they can play as a social thing. Uh, and uh, they, uh, at Fort Chaffee, they have put pickleball courts on the old tennis courts. And those are old tennis courts. And they're full of people all the time. They've got tournaments, they're having one in Hot Springs. These pros from Hot Springs are giving the workshop. Now, I, I'm just saying it's coming. And I think it would appeal to a lot of the people coming here to visit if they had that as an option at the, at the park. You know, like if you, the tennis court isn't being used. They said they had the net when I was at the last meeting, and they put it up. So if they put permanent pickleball courts and they advertise it, I think it'd get a lot of, of participation from people coming from out of town. What I really wanted to propose, and I did this back about six months ago, and I even gave a view from the sky of the park and everything, is putting a Frisbee golf, nine holes, not very expensive. And uh, that would attract a lot of kids. And, uh, and that park is big enough. You don't even have to interfere with the soccer track. It would just be real good. And you know, I was thinking, this is going to be real appealing to have all these activities with the community getting bigger, and all the homes we're going to build on the river. I don't know if they're going to build them now or not, because after that big rain, it's nothing but a big beach out there. But uh, so anyway, I would just think that that's just another something that would appeal to the community. I see it everywhere. So, you know, I've been here 14 years. I like this kind of stuff. And you talked about, somebody talked about improving the community and the attraction of it. I just think it would be good. And the other thing I want to propose is they put some kind of a wall I used to see kids hitting on that, that handball wall all the time with all kinds of balls. Don't have to put those three sides up, just one wall where people can hit tennis balls or a pickleball or whatever. Anyway, that's my proposal. Okay. I didn't make it sound as fun as I wanted to, but anyway, I think it's a good proposal. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank yes, you. Sir. Council, could I make a suggestion on this? Yes. I think it's a good idea. but. Uh, Kerry, y'all's group is looking at that kind of stuff. I think we need to let the group that's working on getting stuff like that going talk with him and come back and see. City General ain't getting money right now. We, they can't do anything. But y'all are looking at fundraisers and doing some things like that. I, would y'all consider looking at his proposal in the project? Absolutely. So. Are y'all okay with it that way, Council? Or sure. y'all want to do what something? We, what we've run into in times past, sir. What was his name? Joe. 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 What we run into in times past is okay. Oh, uh, is we make an improvement and then somebody vandalizes it and yeah. we repaint the walls. Someone puts up something that's offensive, that type of deal, and. Uh, at some point, we need. It'd be really nice to have an elderly, or just a vi a volunteer that was willing to be aware of the park. Like in other words, shut the park and open the park, it's kind of as a service to the community. You know, and kind of keep an eye out because we we're, we we I guess I got discouraged with improving, and then it just there being nothing there, you know, right. later, like still the nets, things like that. I understand that. Don't you we know. still have the signs down there that says it's after this amount, after this time, it's... Yeah, there's a new sign, that's the point. That's what I thought. Yeah. So that part's already coming. 
Because yeah. it's not fenced in, so you really can't. Yeah, it's usually yeah. just one or two or three people that go over yeah. there and they'll tear the bathroom up. They tear, you know, Because I've been down here yeah, yeah. six, seven o'clock at night walking, you know, and it's, you know. Yeah. Like, All right. When they patrol, you know, that's there. Right. Uh, what, you think that the, cha the chamber would look at that as one of the projects possibly and would, probably would get the, it in the there. revitalization um, committee would probably look at that um, right. so we can yeah, look at that they, back. you know I think the frisbee course would be a big attraction yeah I'm, I'm hearing people that are saying you know I go to hot springs and do st stuff like that when I'm staying here they could be staying here like yeah. I say get appealed to that age group that would really like to do that kind of thing I think too you know yeah. with their kids and all that just get them more out there you know yeah, and that's exactly what we're looking at in that revitalization group. Yeah. So. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Well, thank, thank you. There's anything to vote on there. If y'all are okay with that, we're going to move that to to your committee and let y'all yeah. get back oh, with us. Okay. Thanks. All right. Next is Rick Driggers, Play Street Speed Bumps. Residents on Play Street just asked the. Uh, Speed bumps be put back that were taken out when the street was painted. They had a lot of cars running up and down the road and they were running over dogs and nearly hit kids and way too fast and the cops can't be every place and they just like to have that speed bump put back in there. Very, very simple. Repeat. How many speed bumps was it? There was two. Two speed bumps on that road. I think so. You put another up by my house if you want to. <laughs> Well, they don't got a big hill to rent. I'm, 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 I'm generally, I'm, I, I'm not a speed bump person, I'm not a speed bump guy either, but in the street, that particular get it nice street, and I, I, I'm, in, I'm in favor on that particular street of uh, uh, putting them back like they was with the citizens who want it. But that's just me. I think they're hard on emergency vehicles and... Things like that. Well, the thing about a speed bump is you're going to have to make, to make them efficient, you're going to have to put one about every 50, 60 foot because they're going to go real slow with this speed bump. They're going to ramp right up until they get to the next one, then they're going to slow down and go over. <laughs> they're going to do it again. My family that lived on that street, you'd be sitting there and you'd hear them slow down. Mm. Go over it. <laughs> <laughs> What's the sound? How many citizens do you have? What was that? How many citizens? <laughs> well, how many citizens have, do you think of? Or actually, one of most of the residents of Clay Street right there along the road. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Smoky Bear. There's a, I mean, there. and a lot of that neighborhood down there, when you get start getting toward the apartment end of it, there's a lot of a lot of kids and a lot of stuff down there. I understand. But there's just a lot there's of speed. Right there at the glove factory, right on up through there. And it's, it's some of the Hispanic community that's doing it. And it's the Hispanic community that came to me. You still have the one speed bump in there at just before the bluff factor. It's cool, yeah. It's cool. I make a motion, and if it dies for lack of a second, it dies, that we put back the two that were there before we paved it. Have a motion? Dies for lack of a second. Uh, large. Bird. Sir? I'll pass the bird. Thanks, sir. Large dumpster trailer, Britt. Skag. Stag. I can't pronounce any of that. Brett. Brett. I talk to you every day. I don't ever call your last name. Will somebody fill his jack and coat? Can I get one? All right. You've all got a packet in front of you. I included uh, four prices for quotes that I got from different companies. Uh, the two on the first page would have to be delivered. There's a delivery fee included with them. The local pickups are in Hot Springs. I've got you details on all of them. Is this what we're talking about right here? Yes, sir. Uh, the, the first one there, it walks over what, we, what we've been given on the budget. But the uh, Texas Pride, it come in. Uh, it's an 18,000 pound trailer. I've got details on it also in your packets. Uh, the Max D trailer is what Boyd uses now, except the trailer we're looking at from the place in Hot Springs is a bigger trailer than they carry. Uh, so we'll be able to handle all the trash and not have a problem with it picking up. 
they're carrying a 14,000 pound trailer, we're getting 21. Or well, that's what, what I told you. Okay, clarify that. Okay, the, say that one more time. Their trailer that Boyd has is a 14,000 pound trailer. That's okay. what it's rated at. Okay. But smaller dumpsters. The one where you, we, I quoted from Hot Springs is 21,000. Okay. And they are, them, them particular trailers are tandem, single axle trailers? Yes. What is your trailer that you're talking about here? Is it a dual? Yes. It's a dual trailer. Mm -hmm. So it's tandem dual. Yes. Eight tires. Mm -hmm. Okay. That helps a lot. And what's the winching capacity on this particular? It's got to be 21,000. 21,000. Yep. So snatch block that you get you 42. Yep. Okay. $35,000 is what you approved in the budget in uh, sanitation for this project. Has this got sales tax on it on top of this, Britt? There is no sales tax. No sales tax for city. That's okay. On that. Okay. So you're right on. That's what you've got in the budget. And then the city would do its big trash haul in itself. Would you already? Yes, ma'am. I'd have to look back in the budget. You're, we're trying, we're justifying some salaries that's there being paid out of that department. And it's, uh, it's about, Brenda, you remember, or I don't remember what it was. I'd have to look back in the budget. So much per month for the dumpster. And you pay for each dump for rent on the dumpster, and then you pay for $7 hauling it off. Back. You're going to pay for the tipping that's fee still matter. anyway. <clears throat> Every how many tons goes tipping fee, you're going to pay the tipping fee. What you're doing is you're, the city's going to haul it instead of board $7.50 a day. And $7.50 a dumpster a day, and you're going to have, we could stagger, like, y'all got a cleanup day coming up. If we had these here, you could stagger those through town, and on a cleanup day, we could have those dumpsters there, and then we could get them picked up. It's something that the city's never been able to provide, so this is going to be something new. Next question. What's the loading height of that? Uh, I'm looking at the the reason I ask that is About six foot. Six foot is the total height. Mm -hmm. So you can load that with a mini X or whatever yes. it is. Um, yeah. This was something that was discussed. Yes, ma'am. We well, have this bomb. Did you vote it? You have this by March 11th. That's when our the, big cleanup. Depending on which one they decide to go with, Max B and the Log Trail or <coughs> in Hot Springs and ready. Okay. We can't schedule around you and Jerry Spring Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, no, it's the whole city. It's not just Hot Springs. Yeah. Okay. Hey, three inch, <laughs> Alan, three inch channel. Three inch channel. On 12 inch center. Oh, how much? 12 inch center. Twelve inches good. Twelve yeah. inches good. Three inch channel. What? what yeah. Say the gauge of the channel. <clears throat> Look on your Max D's okay. spec sheet. Right. Six foot extended high riser, next riser box that tells you yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Brent, show me right here the trailer you're talking okay. about. Okay. Okay. Keep going until you see yeah. Max D. He needs to come to the and that's how many three. You're getting a trailer and three dumpsters for 35. You won't see any of the savings for. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, but it will oh, down yeah. the road. Down the road. Yeah. And these are all just one, right? One trailer. These are, that's each spec for each trailer, yes. Uh, like that's one trailer. Yes. We're getting well, one, trailer one trailer and three and dumpsters. Yes. Yeah. We have one trailer and each dumpster. That's what you do. It's forty-two hundred dollars. Oh, okay. I got you. Oh, okay, I got you. Okay, is everybody, y'all ready to make a motion or need some more discussion? Well, we we set aside thirty-five. Is that correct? Yes, sir. So really, the only only discussions if we like this trailer is. Another $2,700, right? No, Max D is $35,000. Yeah. 35, exactly. Oh, it's 35000 Okay. The, the only one that's over budget would be yeah. the American Trailer Company. Yeah, it's at 37800 yeah, and, and Max D is the one on the 12-inch center. 
Yes. Yes. Okay. That's perfect. That is the that is the biggest trailer out of all of it. It's the heaviest carrying trailer there is. <coughs> the biggest one I can find. Unless you want to buy. It. I make a motion. We approve that. I think that sounds like a pretty legit. I have a motion to accept Max D trailer proposal for thirty-five thousand dollars to have a second. Most of your large item pickups are Friday, Saturday, right? Yeah. You can leave the dumpster and haul Monday. You don't have to move them. You only got three dumpsters though. You know how fast that's going to fill up on a Saturday. We may have to put the crew working. If we do that, we got it working. You just you may have to put somebody working that pickup. We may have to take off Monday and work Thursday. That's right. We take off Monday and work Friday. Okay. We'd do that if we're going to have the pickup day that they're going to do. You have somebody take whoever's going to drive the truck take off, so they wouldn't be on overtime and work the days that they're doing. We'll rotate that out as we get there. Okay, do we have a motion and a second? I got a motion, I got a motion to have a second. I'll second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion approved. Spots? Uh, uh, Brent and Cindy. I'm going to let you all go there next. I'll start. I don't like to have my back. That's what I should make. Yeah. 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 It's not my best side. Um, the last time I was here was 10 years ago, asking the city council if we could, if a newly organized group, spots, could help out at the shelter. Little did we know <laughs> that what we thought was going to be like one day a week <coughs> turned into a full-time job. Um, in the 10 years, we have placed over a thousand animals out of the Glenwood Animal Shelter all across the United States, including Canada. We have facilitated the spay and neuter of over 2,100 animals in Pike County through our three spay and neuter programs. We reduced the euthanasia rate in the shelter from 95% to less than 5% and have maintained it for over eight years. And finally, we gifted the city in 2019 with an $18,000 renovation. So why am I here? We've aged out. We have gotten old. <laughs> we have never been able to raise our volunteer level to the point that it needs to be to maintain itself. People come and mostly go. It's too much for them, they can't do it, blah, blah, blah. We've had pretty much the same group. We have 11 volunteers. Out of that, <coughs> eight are active. Out of that, five are over 70 years old. Two of them are 80. We cannot wrangle animals anymore. Uh, we cannot get up at 4 o'clock in the morning and not transport. We've been unable to maintain, or not maintain, we've been unable to grow a volunteer base as well as COVID having a dreadful effect on rescue all across the nation. And two of our key personnel and one other are retiring from active <coughs> and we have no one to replace us. And we've been working on this problem for 12 months. We have no solution. Uh, so what we are, and we've been in meetings, everything, we are working on reorganization, and the good news is we will be maintaining spay and neuter clinics and probably rabies clinics and chip clinics. The unfortunate part of it is we're going to have to withdraw from our acti most of our activities with the shelter animals. And um, breaks our hearts. We have been privileged over 10 years. We love what we do. We just didn't expect to get old. I don't know why. We just didn't. <laughs> and I guess I'm here mainly to let y'all know this, but also to see if there isn't some dialogue that can get started on a, an actual animal control program. So that's, that's all I have to say. Can I ask you a question? Sure. 
Is it, and I don't know the legalities or any of this, but would, is it possible that some of the some of the uh, different uh, municipal judges and such could uh, on community service for somebody that had you know gotten something light like some speed stuff could you know let them volunteer at the shelter as part of a community service program that would help y'all out on some. Well, that you know, a it's not just a not? matter of volunteers. It's a matter of, I could have 100 volunteers. Right. If I don't have the leadership, it doesn't work out. Right. Um, I just spent the manpower plan. I know you got to clean the facilities and all that kind of stuff. I just didn't know. How. Yeah, I, I don't know about that. You know, we used to have, what was it, like 504s or something mm -hmm. years and years and years ago? And there was no um, supervision for them. And so that didn't happen. And Chris is shaking his head, and he probably knows more about it because he was animal control officer when we started this. Yeah, we had high hopes, and we did really well. Uh, I hate to hear this, but I understand. It's it is a tearjerker. I mean, literally. I I know because I was the guy putting down ninety five percent of it. It sucked. It was really bad, and it was. This was a great program. I and hate to hear about it, but things have changed so much. We're full of it. You would think after two thousand spay neuters and a program that has gone on for ten years, and us harping on collar your dogs, put IVs on your dog. You'd think something would have changed. Nothing has changed except. In 2022, we have seen more dog surrenders than in the previous eight and a half years cumulatively. And there's a reason for that, you know. Unfortunately, and policy, a lot of the dogs are brought in from other places and dumped. Because there is a know, significant number of dogs. They know we that, will take care of And you know what the problem is there? The county doesn't have a humane society. The county doesn't have a shelter. When people exactly. call me and I get calls every day, come pick up my dog. Yep. And, well, I can't. You know, I can't anyway because it has to be the dog catcher who does that. But you're not eligible for cleanliness. And they say, what do I do? What do I do? I give them possibilities. But I also say you go sit on the desk of your county judge and say you need an animal shelter. You know? There has been no progress in animal rescue in the 10 years that we've been doing this. I mean, that's, that's something that, you know, y'all need to think about. Once they back out, what do we go to? What's your recommendations, Ms. Cindy? I would like, and I don't have, I mean, we have racked our brains trying to figure this out. Animal rescue across the nation is in trouble. Over the pandemic, 26 million dogs and cats were adopted out or rescued. Many of those are coming back to the animal shelters because people are going back to work and the economy is down. And um, we send, we used to have a really nice routine going. Once a month, we sent seven to a dozen dogs to our rescue partners in Massachusetts, okay? Big project. This is not just, oh, here's a dog. It means they have to be vetted, spay neutered, raised millions of pieces of paperwork transported to Little Rock or flown to Colorado. And um, now, and it just used to be a rope thing. We had a waiting list for Glenwood dogs in Massachusetts. Everything has changed. All those dogs adopted during the pandemic are showing up in northern shelters. They want southern dogs. We are saturating the north. In 2022, ASPCA sent 40,000 dogs from the south to the north. That's one rescue organization. There are 18,000 rescues in the United States. There are 3,800 shelters. I don't really think people really realize how much work is involved when it comes to this type of thing. And that's 
it was a blessing whenever you showed up because there's no way one guy could have handled that. No way. Oh, we love what we do. I get Christmas cards, more Christmas cards from dogs and people. And we're, and I don't know if everybody knows it, but Glenwood Animal Shelter is well known, very well known. It is well known. It's, I have a lot of contacts across the United States. Do you know? We have a forty-two, you know, forty-five thousand dollar. That's how much we spent last year. Half of that was spayed or clinics. Okay, and part of that is paid for by the pet owner. The other half is paid for by Tim Bainham's foundation and two rescue organizations in Colorado that send us ten thousand dollars. We have more support from outside the city of Glenwood than in the city. We have two volunteers from Glenwood. Um, it's just really interesting to answer you. I don't have an answer. I still would like to start a dialogue, maybe with you all. Rhett and I kind of started it. Um, coming up with an animal control program, okay, of some sort. We've got ordinances on the books. We do not have a certified animal control officer. Spots off the paper for part of that. We have a dog catcher, nice dog catcher. <laughs> Catches a lot of dogs. But it is not to the benefit of the public, the dog, or the dog catcher, that they are not certified <coughs> and know what to do, know how to catch a dog. We have dogs coming in and totally traumatized because people don't know how to catch them. So my answer is I don't have an answer. But could we? is it feasible to start a dialogue to make progress? Ten years, no progress. Things are the same or a little bit worse at the shelter than they were 10 years ago. Would you agree, Chris? Yeah, but y'all have accomplished uh, a lot, too. Don't let that go. I'm sorry, what? Y'all have accomplished a lot 10 years. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, you know, so that do, that's, oh, not don't going, to, that's not going unnoticed, is what I'm saying. And that's wonderful. Yes. You know, our pats on the back come from dogs being adopted instead of killed. So <laughs> it is going to break our heart go from a 95% placement rate to a 95% kill rate, which is what it was 14 years ago. It'll go back to it, I promise you. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Is this something Karen might can find a grant or something for the city? I, I don't know. It depends on what you want the grant for. If you're looking for a grant for an animal control officer, I imagine that's a possibility. I don't know. Um, and you know, spots is separate mm -hmm. from animal control from the city. It's a, it's a hybrid. We looked into it, and best of my knowledge, it would have end up being the way I could have got a grant before was through it would have, it would be where we'd have to do the county though, and we don't really need a county wide shelter. It is you. I don't care if you build that thing ten times bigger than it is right now. You'll never have enough room in it. You never have enough room now. But do you know why? Because it gets her out of the city. Yes, you, it needs to stay within the city. Do you know why the North wanted our dogs? Because their shelters were empty. Why, for goodness sakes, their shelters empty? They have strict dog laws. They have strict. Dog Very laws. strict dog laws. They have city licenses. Your dog is spayed and neutered, you get a big discount on those licenses. It's not, you don't. You have it on the ordinances already to have them licensed. It's just never been enforced. And I tried. It needs to be enforced, and I mean that. I tried to enforce it. That I will tried help. to get them to put them. With animal control, it didn't it'll, happen. It needs to be, we need to do something. And it won't happen on it. an animal control budget of eight hours. Or eighteen thousand dollars a year. The only money that the city has for that is what's put on. The, is it seventy-five cents on the water bill? That's it's a dollar fifty. Dollar fifty, and that is an optional.
deal? For the in city limits people. And it doesn't bring in that much. What no. do you have about? Thousand people. You're a, you you literally work off an of eighteen thousand dollar budget. That's got to pay all your bills. That's got to feed the animals. That's got to clean the pen. That's that's. And it. we're paying out of we're paying what eight hours? How many hours a week is that? Eight budget? hours a week is all you're paying. Eight hours a week is uh, that money is all that's paid out of the city general. And one of my points is you'll never know. Greg, Don't tell him. Tell him I've got what I need. Tell Brenda I've got what I need. There are groups. There may be groups that are doing things and have figured out creative ways. But you never know unless you have a focus of group that tries to figure it out. Okay, we're not going to solve the problem tonight. No. You want to set a committee up to look at it, or what do you want to do, guys? Y'all had your last meeting yet? No, we're, we're fumbling through March, okay? Do we, uh, we have a spay neuter clinic coming up March 7th through 9th. That is busy. We have $110 to it. And, I mean, we don't have a closed date, but we're figuring March. Will y'all let me know? Mm -hmm. Oh, I can at least show up. Thank you, everybody, because that's, I hate it, but. We hate it, too. There will be tears. Thank y'all. Thank you. What is what movement does the city want to look at doing or not doing? Or? Myself, personally? I think we need to start enforcing what we have on the books. And I'm going to put it in front of you again because I did it once before. Can you bring us back at the next meeting? It's in your ordinances, yeah. I'll, okay. I'll see if I can hunt the ordinances up. Okay. I'm sure Brent's got Can I just it. give you a quick example? I told you surrenders are up. Okay. Uh, dog catcher goes out, animals roaming around, brings it to the shelter. Finds the owner. The owner comes in and says, I'm not going to pay the $18 or the $20 or whatever it is to get the rabies shot, which is mandated by the state. And so the dog gets surrendered. Does that make sense? Any surrender should involve at least payment for the rabies shot and for the mandated spay neuter. No animal can leave a rescue or a shelter in the state of Arkansas without a rabies shot and a spin mm -hmm. It's not lying. And you've got two big volunteers. Say, my boy, there's a problem right there. I understand. I'm trying to find an answer, guys. <laughs> I don't know what they are. Take care of our own problems. Huh? Take care of our own problems. Okay. Uh, Chris, you going to meet with them? When they have their meeting? When's your next meeting? Won't be tomorrow, probably next week. Monday or Wednesday? Monday or Wednesday. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah, because next week isn't the Okay. Chris, to get back with the council with a follow up on that. Y'all got any other suggestions, council? Chris, if you look into that and see what our options might be, I don't know. Uh, Brent, it's next on uniforms. Uh, in your baggage, you've got quotes from uh, what Billy was able to get us and some stuff, other stuff I found. The guys had uniforms when I first started here. We had a cleaning service. I know y'all went through before uh, trying to get a cleaning service, but it's, I mean, I, I don't agree with it. We can we can wash our own uniforms. It's, it's not fine. Uh, before I got your prices close to what the cleaning services would get, which was 10 uniforms a piece. But I went ahead and just did five. Wanted to work five days a week, just wash them ourselves. Ain't no need in switching out. We can just do five uniforms a piece. And then when it comes to it, and they get tore up or whatever, you know, replace it. Uh, Billy brought us. This is mainly what I'm looking at. A pair of, just, a pair of Dickies brown pants. The shirt close to this one, but it needs to be reflective. Uh, just because that's what Ocean wants us to have for working next to the highway and stuff like that. Instead of wearing a vest all the time, they can just wear a reflective shirt and not have to worry about forgetting your vest. Uh, those, these, these shirts here, the yellow ones on the front, are pretty much what I'm looking at. I quoted the ones with the black on the bottom just because if you got a belly, it rubs and it gets dirty, but I mean, it's fine. Those are, that price right there is a dang good price for those shirts. I wouldn't have those 
ones with the black on them were the cheapest ones I could find at that price. But uh, what's this material that's yours? Uh, uh, should be the same on all of them. I don't know if it's this or not. This? Yeah, they should be the same. Fiber mix. Yeah. I'm not sure if it's a cotton. Polyester. No, hey, I will tell you that. I will tell you right now. Those shirts right there are going to be hot. Yeah. Is that or what? Is that the same material? Is that this material? No, it's like a uh, cotton. Yeah, not, yeah, kind of. But they're high. I know what we're paying for. So, I just like to get the guys' uniforms that are tearing their own clothes up. You know, and I know that's expected to work, but we digging in the holes and wearing the vests and all that all the time. I like them to have some uniforms. If we get the full, we can use them. I hope it's right. uh, The pants are, would you say, no, the next one. The brown one. $29.99 a pair. Uh, you also brought Dickies Blue Jeans. They're twenty two ninety nine a pair. How many employees you got? Eight. Nine. Eight. 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 Me. Well, I have four. Really? Yes. Shirts eleven. Eight. Yes. Me personally, uh, there's a lot of elderly people in our community. Uh, a lot of panhandlers would go around pulling scams from time to time, different things. Uh, I would love to see our employees in, and not everybody has the capability of using the high, the good degreaser and the right stuff to clean the uniforms. And where I'm going with this is I think that our city workers uh, should be in a nice uniform shirt at bare minimum a nice uniform shirt uh, I know pants may be kind of different but a nice uniform shirt that's got Glenwood Brent Staggs um, and they service them they do the 10 and we get 5 and then we do another 5 and that's what I'd like to see us go that direction I think that uh, they'd be guaranteed a set, fresh set of clothes and our people I mean Honestly, if someone knocked on the door dressed like some of our workers and not thrown any shade at our workers, knocked on at my door, my wife didn't recognize them, she would call me and say, who's at our front door? I don't recognize them. So I'm in favor of logo stuff if they're going to be on the payroll. But that's just me. It's not. What was the cost of logo stuff? I brought that before the council before I was here. What was the cost of the logo? Uh, to have one, well, I mean, you said the fire the shirt is all I really care the about. Fire department's got shirts done not too long ago with reflective and all that. I'm no talking. He's talking about your lease program. Yes. Oh, uh, we had to find the uniforms. Yeah, you bought the, I cannot remember what, I don't, I don't have it on hand. It's like where Aramark or somebody like that yeah, picks Aramark or Centaur. You were looking at several thousand dollars a year. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and it was a five-year contract. I think it was like if I want, if I'm not mistaken, it was a hundred and fourteen dollars. Mm -hmm. Is that right? I'm on my shirt. Some person a, a, a week. A week. Uh, a week. Yes. That not, was a week. Not per person. Yeah. It's yeah. No, it no, was no, super no, expensive. No. 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 It was one hundred and fourteen dollars no, for the crew yes, per, week. per week. Per yes. week. Yes. 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 So when you divided that up, it's like nine dollars a person a day or a week. Yeah, nine dollars per week per person for the ones that, uh, yeah. But uh, All right, for those t-shirts here that they could take with them when they leave. For the pants, you said five pairs. Something to wear. Something bright. Everybody's yeah, it's one hundred and fifty dollars. Times eight employees. That's twelve hundred dollars for the pants, and that's four hundred and forty for the shirts. So you're looking at sixteen hundred and forty dollars outfit, everybody. It'll still have the price of the little one. That's what it is. That and the what he just hung up. That'd be sixteen hundred and forty dollars outfit, everybody. That's half the price of a mirror bride or something like that. That's it. That's each have guy we, getting five have shirts. We and just five. checked the shirts though. Like got a quote just on the shirts. It's right here. 
I mean, without, talking about without, that. Man, I don't like just a shirt. I mean, I'm just saying, like, say your mother was at the house or your grandmother, whatever. We can, I mean, so I can knocked take on these the to a, a shirt, a vinyl person, and have them put them. I just want them logoed. I think yeah. that people are going to feel safe. I can have them put on. I know, I know our work, which we have a lot of employees, we pay $8 a shirt. But we have over 150 employees, so we get a business. Yeah, yeah. That's and you get you know eight times. Well, you know, Forty right bucks. On that. If you've got the city of Glenwood on your shirt or that's your name, people feels more safe. If, oh, and yeah. that's, we have it on the vest. Yeah, but you can do now. like you said. You can take it to a final yeah. final place. The, the vest we have the now. We still got one. Yeah. Yeah. Just the logo. Yeah. I'm very yeah. negotiable. However yeah. y'all want to go, I just want a logo. And I can, I mean, I can logo them the same way the vests are. It's got the city logo on it, city of and public works, and it's got it on the back also. Yeah, if I did my Look at that too. We got got a lot of other things discussed tonight. Can we table this and get Brett to bring back next meeting the uniform price again, so y'all can get a fresh look at it and this, and get the shirt logo, get a price, and that way you'll have it all fresh in front of you. Right now, you're talking. Three different ways, and nobody knows what numbers we're talking about. So, can we do that? Bring back next meeting. Sure. He wants to look at the uniform cost yeah, I'll make again, the table. and then this the shirt cost uniform cost, correct? Yes. And this the shirts, and so, then this right here. If y'all, could you bring it back next yes. meeting? Yes. Okay. So, I want to make a motion to table it. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, yeah. Okay. Fire department bylaws, Brent Uh. Okay. Again. Uh, your bylaws for the fire department have been changed, and I know y'all did it. What? Eleven? Yeah, it's it's been a while. It's been but a while. I, we hadn't been able to find the copy of the amended bylaws. It was on the computer. Okay. Well, we sat down again, and we voted a while back, and I brought this to you before, uh, but it's getting to where there's four of us. Fire. We have, you know, and you know, I know it's a volunteer department, but at the same time, the city's paying retirement on people. You know, all this stuff. Uh, I want to, I want to up the numbers, yeah. and the guys on the fire department agree. Uh, we've done, we've made some changes to the bylaws. I don't know why yours isn't, because you took yours. Yours isn't highlighted. Uh, yours isn't highlighted. Well, I made some. I highlighted the main changes to the uh, by, uh, bylaws that we did in that meeting. Uh, in Article 2, Section 2, which there's two Section 2s because I guess Brad can't decide, I don't know. Uh, we took out Treasurer and Quartermaster out of the original. Uh, just because Secretary Treasurer did the same thing, it's, they were really kept up with the financials anyway. Uh, we also took now the next section two, section two point two, I guess. Uh, we changed it to a two year from a two year term to a four year term with chief and assistant chief alternating every two years. So you would have, you know, in two years the assistant chief would get and then that way if you it's if the chief good. is a project going something he's working on, it doesn't die out mm -hmm. when they you know Y'all let me stumble through it. I, I can't explain this stuff very well. Uh, article 4, three, yeah, 4, uh, Section 1, it was changed uh, to where they don't have to live in the city limits to be on the fire department. Uh, if they live outside five miles, it had to be approved. Mainly that's for like the city employees that work for the city. Uh, that are here all day long. That's during the daytime you have city employees fighting fire. And so that's for them mainly. You know, if you have somebody that's gonna be here all the time that works in town, they could be approved to be on the fire department. Uh, before it was only city limits only, is what it said in the bylaws. You had to live in the city limits. Uh, section two of Article Four, uh, I have to live in the city or in the area for a year and then submit to a background check. Just because technically you can't be a firefighter in Arkansas with a felony, but you can't check. We have no way of checking it without doing a background check. So 
background checks on any of these people? That's what we're doing. That's what's in the Bible. That's what we're, we're proposing. Uh, in Article 5, Section 6, I've changed the minimum requirements. Uh, it was three fires, three meetings in a year. Last year, we, we ran upwards of 300 calls for the year. And three fires and three meetings, and that 300 is... How many of those were fires? Uh, 57. So, uh, we changed it to... Uh, no more than le less than two meetings per quarter. That way they're still coming to meetings throughout the year. Because most of them get their three fires, three meetings in January, and they're done. You don't see them the rest of the year. And then the city's paying retirement off. The two meetings per quarter, at least they're showing up throughout the year. They're keeping up with ongoings of the fire department and know what's happening. Uh, ten fires per year, you're paying them retirement. At ten fires a year is nothing crazy. Yeah, 57 last year. Yeah, and that's that's been a pretty steady number every year <coughs> since I've taken over. Could you repeat all that? I had to go look. <laughs> <laughs> oh, He's I bet I could do it better this time because I stumbled through it once. Uh, <laughs> and then on the fires, they may show up to their three fires. They might not show up to nothing else. Wrecks, rescues, all that other stuff. Uh, medical calls, we're through the roof on medical calls. You know, 90% of our calls are, are medicals. So we excluded them out of, you know, because you end up with everybody that's not a first responder showing up to medical calls you don't need. Them. So we changed it. We put 25% uh, of all the other calls ex excluding medicals. So that's wrecks, rescues, service, uh, all that kind of stuff. River. <laughs> yeah, the river. I mean, every one year, I think, we, well, we did two or three every weekend during the summertime. What crank can you do? Uh, Article 6, Section 2, uh, upon suspension of any fireman, a hearing will be provided before the appeals board at the fireman's request. The appeals board <coughs> consists of three members, one appointed by the fire chief, one appointed by the suspended fireman, and one mutual agreement by both parties. So we'll come up with a committee to hear their uh, I just need y'all's approval on it. When's the place. last time you went through and revamped and took off old members? Uh, we do it every beginning of every year. I haven't done. I haven't been through all my stuff for this year yet, or last year yet. I still got to go through the calls and see who hasn't made it and all that. So I haven't been through it one hundred percent. Can I ask you a question? Would it be possible that? Um, you know, people have obvious health problems or whatever at times, and uh, would it be possible to set up some type of a system where y'all know in the event someone was going to be removed from the fire department? Because we, when we looked at this before, one thing that really bothered me was someone might have contributed in their youth, and then they had gotten picked up a heart problem or something else. So then I thought, man, it's kind of, you know, discrediting them when they're 13, 14, 16 years in or they've had a, you know, family well, problems. So I was wondering if we, if y'all might have some type of a system where y'all would notify them via certified mail and then in three months have a hearing and then in three months take action or something that would give them time to respond so it wasn't just like, well, I told them they better be there or they're fixing to lose their job. You know what, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, I mean, it's a... The whole thing is, if you're going to be on the fire department, be on the fire department. Right. I mean, it's, you got to, there's literally, if how someone's recovered from a knee course. surgery or something. Yeah, if you're out for a reason, we've been out. Yeah, we had yeah. one, you know, we've got a female on the department. She had a baby this year. Right. She didn't make her fire some meetings, but she's still on the department. It, you know, it's based on circumstance. Right. You know, I'm not just going to, well, you didn't make it, you're out. But if there's a reason that you're not making it, you know, it needs to be made known because we're coming out of general fund. We're paying these guys retirement out of general fund. And, you know, we're not getting any money from the city. We get rural fire money and all that stuff. We haven't got money from the city in the past, what, Chris? Would you be willing How long, Chris, we got money from the general fund? 
gosh. We've been running off Act 833 and rural fire money. Years. Brent, would you be willing for Chris to be one of the committee members that decided that? That's fine. I, I'm, a, I'm fine with that. Because he's on the council end. Before you do that, remove me. <laughs> well, no, I did remove him. You remove already done it? Yeah, okay. Let me ask you right here, too, just a question. It says, Oh, I gotta find it where it was. I just saw it. You got my door. The committee. Right here. Absentee will be considered excused or unexcused by the fire chief since in the event of a tie decision will be passed on the committee. Is that the same committee as what the fireman yes. gets to choose? Or is it a committee already? No, you're going to, have to form a committee. That's what I'm asking. Form a committee. Yeah, that's because uh, here you're saying the committee's gonna be the yeah. appeal to the board consists of three one appointed by the fire chief, one appointed by the fireman, and then one mutual agree. Yeah. So if I'm not at a fire and I say, Well, I had to work, you say I don't agree with you, so we're gonna go form a committee or you got a committee that's gonna decide that. That's what I'm asking. Section one says upon three days notice in writing. Yes. You know, it can be I mean, it good, reprimanded, just... demoted, suspended, or expelled. I'd like to see that be more like a six month type of deal with a committee that actually heard the grievance because sometimes you're just out of pocket for whatever reason. Well, I you mean, know, and, and you'd still get, we'd most still get of these the guys same place. The department, they're easy to find. Yeah, you know, we'd get, they, still get the same, same, we'd yeah. both be getting the and same And I've thing. got every fireman that's on the fire department has an app on their phone. I can send a message directly to the phone, whether it's off, whether they don't have the app, nothing. I can send a message to their phone and it makes it go off no matter what. Yeah. I can send you a message right now. You turn your phone on, do not disturb. I can send you a message right now. Yeah. And it, you'll get it. Uh, it's just, it's been going on for years. It's, well, we got to do something about it. Three fires, three meetings a year, that's ridiculous. It really is. As many calls, and you know, y'all you, can call the sheriff's office all day long. I don't like to take my own horn. Glenwood's the best fire department in the county. We're the biggest and we're the best. And I'd like to keep it that way. What's the council's wishes on this? Any more discussion? I mean, what are, I'd like to see Chris be on the committee that decided it. Don't, it don't matter to me. I mean, whoever you want on the committee, I don't care. I mean, well, if you, you ask me to be have, on it, I'm not going to tell you no. I mean, I'd, I'd, I'd be happy to be on there, but I think you need a committee. I do. Yeah. yeah. Regardless who you put on there. They're wanting to change something in what they're presenting as the bylaws is. The only thing I, I didn't have anything to change, I just asked what is it the same committee? Yeah, I'm with Jimmy on that, yeah. That's all I was. Yeah. yeah. Are y'all comfortable working on this or does he need to amend the bylaws and bring it back? I think we're real close to getting something done here. What do you want him to change and bring yeah, back? I, mean, I want it, I I think if you're gonna note in here that it's just gonna go in front of the committee. We need, need to, set a committee. we need to create a committee. We, we need, need to, to have one. We can set a committee immediately. I mean so a council member, and I'm happy with approving this, but I say that we uh, table it till next meeting and give you all a chance to form a committee between now and the next meeting and bring it before the council. Have a motion we table this the next meeting. Uh, yes, sir. Ellen made the motion. Second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Next thing, a big bad wolf is coming to visit. Y'all get all your pictures out right here. TJ is going to explain number three clarifier to serve plant went down. Uh, lack of maintenance and age. Uh, TJ, take it over. Come on up here, TJ. Here's if anybody in the audience wants to see the number three clarifier. Here's pictures of it. Y'all are welcome to look at them. If anybody in the audience wants to look at them, TJ knows what he's looking at already. So. <clears throat> They might not be as organized as what you had them. Yeah, it's possible. I tried. That's what one of you was going to share that with They told that the clarifier was back completely locked up. We went out there first of all, the motor was burned up on it. So we pulled it off, put a new motor on it or we didn't actually put the new motor on it. We got it up there to put on it and then realized the gearbox was completely locked up. Well, so, uh, we pulled the gearbox off. The gearbox was spinning fine. 
the clarifier was the same time and whipped it out. Then we got to realizing that between we got that video, the bearing in the clarifier has over point and a half and three quarters of an inch slack. And the gears are jumping up on top of each other and locking it up. So we drained it all the way down to try to replace the bearing. When we got it drained all the way down, then we found out most of it, because it's sitting under sewer all the time, is rusted and ate up. The metal is deteriorated to the point that we talked about cleaning it up and painting it. I talked to a paint rep from Sheriff and Williams that looked at the pictures and he said, I'll say you paint, but he said, it'll have no warranty on it. He said, because it's ate up so bad, he said, I don't think you can kill all the rust to where it ain't gonna come back off within a year or two years. So I had proposed a deal to build it all back out of 316 stainless steel and redo it instead of out of mild steel and galvanized coat. And of course we gotta replace the bearing on it to get it where to lead and turn and everything. But it huh? Uh, yeah, I mean. You sandblasted, you wouldn't have nothing left. Put you sandblasted, the there ain't nothing left. Uh, the rust on thing holding it together. The rust sure. is what's holding it together. Stainless steel, you say 316? No, 316 grade stainless steel. There's a 304 and then there's a 316. The 304 stainless steel is a tiny bit cheaper, but it's not chemical resistant. 316 stainless steel is a chemical resistant stainless steel. A 304 is supposed to have a submerged life in just regular water, not sewer water, of uh, 254 years. A 316 stainless steel has a life of 1,250 years in the same condition. <coughs> The cost difference in the 304 stainless and that is about fifteen thousand dollars. This no-brainer, huh? It's a no-brainer. It's a no-brainer on which one yeah. to use. Yeah. This one was originally the main huh? One down here. What? The main one down here is what we're talking about, right? No, the clarifier at the sewer plant. The big number three clarifier at the sewer plant. Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know if anybody's seen any of the pictures. I mean, it's... We went out there one day, we got run off. It's... it's you, like, you hadn't, couldn't have seen these pictures if you went. Here's what it looks like out of water. If you look at those pictures, that's... You it, couldn't have seen that if you went out there, because all, all that was under water, or under sewer, or whatever you want to call it. It's 18 foot deep of sewer. I you wouldn't call it water. You definitely don't want to swim in it. All right. I'll call the engineer this afternoon and talk to him about this because you're looking at what's your number? Three or two sixty. Two hundred and sixty thousand dollars. This is a lack of maintenance and age. About half and half. But it's irrelevant what it is. Okay, and talking with the engineer, TJ, you can your gentleman can do me a set of drawings on this, right? Yes. The engineer's suggestion is put 20% on in case it has to go, if somebody turns us in and it has to go to the state to be bid to cover you fees, $260,000 plus 20%. If, if, we, if they draw the plans, it's an emergency, let him go ahead and proceed with the work. The engineer said if somebody calls in and the state gets on to us, they'll submit his plans and they'll be stamped and we'll go and we'll have to pay so all that cost. So it's 312000 right? If we have to go to the state, this is an emergency situation. This is truthfully an emergency situation, but you can possibly get away from doing that, but have the specs drawn up first, and we'll get those to the engineer, and if you don't have to send them to the state, we're not going to pay the 20% because it's an emergency. This would have to be, if we do it this way, Brad, it'll have to be spent out of the non-depreciation fund. And I'm going to give you a sheet on those accounts in just a minute. 
so you know finite well let's look at where that is right now uh, uh, sales tax revenue is that the one that's got three hundred and three thousand dollars in it Brenda Oh, no, that's the phase. What is in the account? I thought it was on the bank account. That's the account, right? That's the, the water The water and sewer revenue. Which one is the money we can spend out of? Maintenance and operations got $937,666 in it. We can spend that money without going through natural resource. If we get down in depreciation bond account, that has to be approved through natural resource. I'm not getting in that, okay? No, I know. I know. All right. Uh, the engineer's suggestion was to allow them to go ahead and draw the plans up for what they're going to do and send them. They'll look at them. And if we don't have to send them Little Rock, we don't have to pay the 20%. If somebody turns us in, we have to send them Little Rock, they'll be ready to send them in. And we'll have to pay all the cost of going to Little Rock and all that stuff. If this wasn't an emergency, I wouldn't suggest you do it this way. We can do it this way because it's an emergency if you want to do it this way. Or we can bid the job. Now then, the city of Dequeen today, the engineer has one of these clarifiers under reconstruction. It's a little bit bigger than ours, and they bid it in galvanized steel, not stainless steel. You're looking at about 50% cost material difference, and the material cost is just what on stainless? Right. On this, huh? The material, just the material without it, just in flat sheets before you roll everything and do anything to it, the material cost is over $130,000. That's almost double what the galvanized would be. And that's no markup on it. That's just, uh, theirs is 300000 plus the 20%. And it's under construction. It bid and is under construction. But it's being put back in and galvanized, not stainless. You can cut the cost of this probably $150,000, but I wouldn't, I mean, be done with it, in my opinion, be out of the way. Well, the simple fact is that clarifier is, what, 15 years old? Yep. It's 15 years old, and it was done with the galvanized when it was put in. And it's gone in 15 years. To me... It's a no-brainer. If you can get the stainless steel for close to the same, you're getting the, you're getting the job done in stainless for forty thousand dollars less than a galvanized bit out at D Queen. He's got that job's under construction. He said this is he said this is a no-brainer if you can get it done for this. And he said if you keep it, put the twenty percent in it. If somebody turns us in and it needs to go to the health department, the health department says we've got a bid or ADQ. They'll have a set of plans approved before it's done. All they got to do is submit them. Okay, and they'll, Billy, they'll guide the paperwork through. So we have the money to pay for this, correct? Yes. Okay, we have to have a clarifier. We obviously want to do it with the right materials. We're not going to find a better contractor than that guy right there, in my opinion. I make a motion we approve this project. For the 260000 plus 20%. If we have to do the 20%. If that, hopefully we don't have to. Right. Now the second. We can't go without a clarifier. That's correct. It's got to be put back and in We service. don't want to put junk back in for taking junk out. I'll second it. Any other discussion? Yes. Okay. We need to put a maintenance program in. We've got to get maintenance back. I'm not, that's something we got to do. We've got the OM manuals out there. They just got to start being followed. I'll make a motion, Chris. Yeah, I had a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All four approved? Okay. I just appreciate that 40 year warranty, TJ. <laughs> <laughs> the water consumption report I got the percentage is wrong on. I was working on this this afternoon. That's wrong. Uh, for the for the year 
at two dollars and seventy four cents a thousand, which I think is a little high. To show you what our leakage cost us in the water department last year, two hundred forty eight thousand seven hundred fifty dollars. That's a year's worth of water loss. We got to stop it. We've been working on sewer for the last months. We hadn't touched the water. We're down at seventy four percent loss from seventy nine. But we got we got to get on this water leakage. I don't know how you're going to do it because we've got that man that was having me on the water leakage working on about five projects right now for the city. And the city crews have been working on the sewer problem. And how you going to, I don't have but so many guys that can work so many hours. And I don't know what our answer is because uh, we've got real water coming down to check the sewer problem over on uh, as quick as they can get here. They've already been scheduled twice and one, one time they had COVID and the other time it was freezing and then we got, there's some titties got in front of us that had scheduled out. They're coming as quick as they can get here to get their problem solved. Uh, I don't know what the answer to all this is because your crews are doing all they can do and we got water problems, we got sewer problems and we got, we can't get all this fixed overnight, it didn't get broke overnight and it's not going to be fixed overnight, but you can't keep spending $250,000 a year on water loss. And this, guess what? This infiltration in the sewer, I guarantee it's cost you at least that much to repump the water and where you pumps out the sewer plant a year. Both are major, major problems. I'm not so sure the sewer is not a more expensive water cost problem to the city than the water is. Because some of this lift stations are handling we're handling water four times to get it to the sewer plant. And that's wear and tear an electric bill on four sets of pumps. And then the sewer plants handle an extra flow. But we got to work. We're working on it, but it's not fixed overnight. So, and I'll get the percentages right and bring that report back to you next month. But that's the actual dollar amount. The percentage is 75 percent. And when he changes that number to put his decimals in in, the, in the, your spreadsheet, he's got to go back and change it back to numbers instead of decimals and commas. And he forgot to do it. TJ forgot to do it on the end. I know what messed it up, but until he cleans that up, it comes out wrong. Uh, does, uh, that's a very pretty large project. Or is it something that we're going to need to pay him the hundred thirty for the material and then pay him for the other? How you need this done? I'm sure he'll want his material paid for when it comes in. I'm glad to have the material paid for when it right. comes in. And then what we're going to do, weekly draws, monthly draws, how you He'll present us a bill on what part of the work is completed and either Brett or I want to look and make sure we're at that phase of the project. That way, you're not just trying. It's a lot of money to string out. We'll, we'll yeah, make sure. We'll make sure he gets yeah. paid. Yeah. Now, one, one lump sum when the metal comes well, in is going to be. Any kind of motion for that or not? I don't. <laughs> since y'all approved it, I don't think y'all approved doing a project. I don't think you'd have to approve paying him in phases. No. You've approved the money, so I don't think you got to approve it in phases. We're not going to pay him two hundred six thousand dollars first right. order. We're going to pay him as he goes. So. Yeah. Okay, next on the list, Harold Vaughn is not here. He has talked to me and is very upset about a water bill. And I have addressed with Miranda and the gentleman in the water department the very problem he's upset about. And I'm just going to let Miranda go through what we're doing different than we were doing in January. We've made massive changes and... I'm gonna let. We had a we had a meeting that was promised with senses, and all of our people's had one day of training with senses. We've all learned a lot. I'm gonna say that much about it. She's bragging on some of the employees, the like the 50 no read meters that weren't reading. They got 27 of those fixed this month. So we're moving. But I need to shut up and let her because she's worked with the guys and she's got where we are. Harold's got a legitimate gripe, but every customer that's got a water leak that we don't call them about, it's got a legitimate gripe. I'll try to represent them the best I can um, while explaining what we have done in the office. Um, we got a letter, and he's very upset about, he says we're supposed to have a top-of-the-notch market software to stop, to stop. This is his exact words, but what he's talking about is he has had this leak ongoing, and um, we have a system in place. Census Analytics and daily one of the tasks we do is go on there we do leak detection um, I also utilize the RNI to I can detect leaks quicker there because it it 
pulls in the informa information a lot faster. Um, I wrote a little something. I'll just read it. It'll explain it a little bit better. Um, Harold Bond left a note with regards to how upset he was about his water bill. The past two months, he has been paying a leak on his property. <coughs> And the leak started on 12-17-22 and ended on January 24th, 23. This caused it to hit two billing cycles in the process. A previous employee was responsible for calling customers that appeared on our leak alarm list. I have documents where she noted she called the customers. Harold was upset due to the lack of calls he received versus the noted times <coughs> I have obtained he was called. Upon further investigation, it appears that the notes repeat themselves so it's unclear whether he was called every time since this analytics showed that he was leaking. To prevent errors in the future, I've established a better training method to ensure that future employees would understand the importance of reaching out to our customers that appear to have a leak. Future employees will understand their role in being accountable for notating leaks. Improvements that have been made since Harold Vaughn first issued a complaint. Um, customers are called every working day unless they request otherwise. Um, I've made sure of this personally. Um, since this happened, it's been a little bit more of a, I've been more diligent in watching what the employees under me are doing. Um, Curtis Steele works for the city. He's made great strides repairing meters this past month. Um, he alone this past month repaired 27 of them. That, due to the training that we had, he learned quite a bit and was able to go out there and just fly through fixing these meters. Typical rereads, we have probably 55 to 60. This month, I think we had 34, so it was down significantly. Um, so that that also cuts down on the employees have to, having to manually read meters for billing each month. Saves the city money, ultimately, on that. Um, and this also means we're able to detect leaks for our customers better. Uh, we've got more of them coming in. So I, Harold has a valid point. He should have been called more than he was. Um, I've got all the printed out documents from where we, where she is notated. I've got the printed out documents of his hour by hour usage. Um, I think this was an oversight and we could have done better on this. We have also got what, 70 meters that are on drive by that does not report to the city daily or hourly. Correct? Is it about 70? It's about 80. About 80? 84. 84. What I have told them to start doing, it's never been done. We're going to put the drive-by in, and right now, unless the council wants to do something different, that's fine. If y'all decide you want to do it different than my suggestion, my suggestion is at mid-month, we run those 80 meters on a drive-by again. It's just a matter of putting the same machine. I have to reload the program. You can run it through and reread. And at least reread one time. This month in rural water billing, we had one customer that used 171,000 gallons on a leak. That's sad that we don't know. We, now we, on the city's defense, we don't we don't get those readings on that customer. It's 80 meters that we only read once a month. But we have the capability of putting two employees in a truck, and it takes about how many hours is it taking y'all to do the drive-bys? So we've got six hours of labor, and I, unless the council directs us to do it weekly, I'm going to do it once every two weeks, and we're going to start reading those rural routes twice a month instead of once a month unless y'all want to do different. Because this month, we've got a customer that used 171,000 gallons of water. That's a big water bill, huh? 317,000. Excuse me, 317,000. It's going to be one monster water bill. About $1,600. $1,600. No, it's a residential customer. And we've got to try to help... Yeah. We can't we can't read those meters on the city's behalf. Nobody has ever been directed to read a non-read meter more than once a month. But we don't have to reload the ha the <coughs> handout unit to read. It can read a second or third or fourth time, and it's just going to be six hours, six employee hours to go do that. I'm I've told Miranda we're going to start at least till the council says different. We're going to start doing it at least. Twice a month. Do y'all think we need to do it more than that, or are y'all happy with well, I mean, twice a month? In 30 days, it used 317,000. I mean, the only thing you're doing is backing it off to 100. And if you do it once a week, if you do it, that's correct. So, I mean, this, if you're reading on the system, 
we're reading you every hour and you'll know it that day. Rule those 84 customers, we don't have a way to do that with. It's not feasible to do it every day, but I'd say a minimum, in my opinion, a minimum run through there at least once a week. That's just me. If the council will vote on that once a week, it'll be a new policy. I'm I have Chris, no problem with that. I mean, a a seven-day leak's going to be a lot, too. Yeah. But it but won't be 313,000 gallons. It's also part of a homeowner's responsibility to look for leaks. To look for leaks. It's I not agree. just rely on the city just because we got the system in there. I mean, if I got a leak, I mean, guys, I go out and look at my meter all the time. It's just me. What is the wishes? Y'all make a motion, and I have told them that one time, but if y'all want to, uh, we'd read twice a month, we want to read weekly, that's fine. I, we need to do something to get this under control for the customer and not break the city either. I mean, it's not fair for a customer to have a $1,600 water bill that usually has a $150 or $100 or $75 water bill. It, and it depends on how that handheld's reading. Some days they can get it done an hour and a half. Some days, today it was three hours, but they didn't come in like they're supposed to. That's weather dependent. Trust me, I know I've read them plenty of times with it. We had to get out of my car water bill and use it to drive by. And it was a commodal time. It doesn't do for what, three gallons? You put that thing in the gallon there on the food. Oh, okay, I got you. Okay, Council, what's y'all's wishes? Make a motion. I'm going to put this on the weekly. I don't think it's that big a deal either. Make a motion. I'll make a motion. Second, Chris. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Miranda, that'll be a weekly task from now on. Hey, one other question, Billy. Uh, in looking back to the previous issue on Harold, uh, the more I read these notes, and I just soon not publicize these things, is there any way we could just adjust this bill, and you may have already done that? Well, the problem with that is state law says we can't, and everybody, we've had people pay $3,000 water bills. If you start doing that, you're going to have to go way back, and you're against the law to do that. You can adjust sewer bills, right. but water bill. We've got to do a better job as a city. I'm not arguing that Harold was is not wrong, but all the other customers had leaks that we didn't know fight on time after uh, put the system in. One. Is wrong too, and we've made they've always made them pay. Right. This yeah. one's in front of us, and the other ones aren't. Though, well, I'm they've saying. been brought in front of you. Well, not in front of me. I understand, but the state law says we can't. Okay. Well, you know, the answer to that not me, but it's I'm just not saying, well. The only way to stop it is to start know. handling what yeah. we're doing better. And we're going to do that. Y'all just voted on it, and everybody knows it. We're going to do it. Now and if it comes back up on us, shame on us, because we're doing what we're supposed to do. You should check for what leaks. I mean, also, I, I mean, you can't just okay. get on the system, did it? Uh, no, no, I'm with you on that, but what Okay. I'm and his wife was notified, so I think that's important to note. Right. She was notified. Okay. Next thing, we have a city employee that left. Mm -hmm. Uh, where did I put that? That was right here. Uh, you got work as a man on the. All right, here it is. All right, does everybody have this? Uh, Michael Lesser. In accordance to what the city has been doing, and at the next council meeting, you'll have the employee manual totally done so it's clear. We cannot pay sick leave except on death and or full retirement. That is state law. The this league told me when I called them about this, they said, it's no question you can't pay on sick leave. I said, it's against the law. So we've been violating the law on the last four policemen that left, or maybe more, and we need to change it. In talking to our attorney tonight, he said he'd be here. He said, my suggestion, since y'all have done this to the other officers, you call this a severance package or you call it something else. We owe him the $350 vacation time. That's, that's going, that's no question. The $5,215 you've that equivalent, you've paid every other city police officer that's left. It's against the law. The city manual, the manual will be changed at the next council meeting. Your attorney said to keep things smooth and fair. Less, would y'all please vote him in a severance package? He said, do not call it sick leave because we're a violation of law. He said, and do not call a severance package when they leave from now on. But he said, I'll have that straightened out in your employee manual at the next council meeting. 
I'm presenting this to y'all and I, I was rudely told by him leaving that he would get his stuff and I said when the council votes on it you will you were in the room with me chief and I told him I would suggest to the council that he gets paid but that was not my decision as mayor that's the council's decision we cannot legally pay sick leave so that needs to be changed from sick time to whatever you want to call it if you want to do it and the lawyer's suggestion is you go ahead and do it because you've done it to four other officers and get the employee manual changed at the next meeting and don't let it happen again Okay. I'll say stop it now, but anyway. It's not my vote. Did he work out his last two weeks? Yes. I, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm with Chris uh, to a certain point, but we have had the last, we have set a precedence, and precedence carries a lot of weight in court, and uh, attorneys are two fifty five hundred dollars an hour. And aggravated employees, uh, and I think he's going to be working in a adjoining county. It runs right up here to the edge of our line. Not saying that ever will affect him, but me personally, in the scheme of things, I would be in favor of giving him a severance of fifty-five hundred twenty dollars. Moving on, with my stuff. That's Change just me. I have a motion. But I have a having said that. I do want this thing changed at the next meeting. This will be changed. Dustin was trying to be here at this meeting, and he did, He said, I will have it finished because y'all gave him that direction at the last meeting. He said, I will be here at the next meeting with your employee manual changed. Now, I did want I noticed right here reading this under police department under the Minnesota League, it says huh? payment for unused sick uh, leave upon death or retirement shall not exceed 60 days. Salary unless the city authorizes a greater amount not to exceed 90 days. Is that something that's going to be in the new one? Yes, he's going to have to write it off of that. Okay. Actually, says, this right here. It says this right here is what he should be going off yes. of because that's already set. That's already law. Because it says, and also an officer who leaves unemployment for any reason other than retirement will forfeit all unused sick time. It's right here. Yep. So. Yep. I want that in there. That's what he. It's going to be in there. Believe me, it's going to be in there, but that's not what we've been doing. I know. I have a motion. I have a second. And my motion is for the second litigation and 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 precedence. It's not. You got to break the chain. The chain will, be, according to the city's attorney, the chain will be broke when you adopt the new employee manual next meeting. So what was his motion? I got a motion uh, to make it a, a severance package on this particular individual, and with the stipulation, with the stipulation of getting meeting. change in the handbook. Give me a second. The three fifty you're paying him because that's vacation time. We owe him. That's not a question, and that is paid in salary. The sick time is not. The compensation for that is not salary, and it is doesn't fall on seventy-two hour rule. If you want to pay them all at once, I don't care. How much were we? How much we pay the other hours? Were they that much? They were whatever they worked out. I don't know. The, the same the same procedure that was worked out, Brenda, is the same hours you're putting right here. Correct. So, ever how the employees' time had worked for the city before, whatever those hours were. Is the same thing you're putting in his hours here. They don't give them checks to each week to get this taken care of. They give it all at once now. On sick time. They cure it. Yeah, the way they. they I had that. I mean, we had that cleaned up four years ago, and now you've got all this stacked up on you again. Yeah. We had a weird situation where several quit or changed in, in, right in a row. And I mean, I'll tell you another one that I noticed in here that hadn't been brought up was that uh, vacation days can only be paid according to this one thing in December. Well, this ain't December, and it's the way I read it. I read it three times. While we're in what December. what you're looking at there, though, is not our is not what we're operating under right now. So don't get 
Right, right. But I'm just you're saying. Going, you're going to approve what the lawyer brings you next council meeting for what our future is going to be. Right. But I'm saying it's very confusing if whenever I. When was this written, Dylan? What's the date of it? This? Uh -huh. I'm, I'm not sure. This is the Municipal League's handout on all of it now. Okay. I'm sure it's been it's changed. It's been for years and it's been updated every time. The, that's the last time it was updated. Yeah. Because it would have been written before then. Doesn't say. I, I'm agreeing what we're going to do in the future, guys. I think that, but y'all need to show the vote, sir. If it were me, if that quit and all didn't give it to me, and you gave it, you they've got proof that you've done it for the last four people. I'm telling, I do it from now on, but you don't want. You're going to change employee manual at the next meeting. Yeah, that was my motion. That was contingent. My motion. It's going to be. It's quick, or if Dustin doesn't have it ready, but then he said he will have it ready for our next meeting yeah, next month. Right. But my motion was contingent upon it being changed, so we're not sitting. Here. Brenda's talked to him today. He says it'll be ready Friday. Okay. And when I hired Greg, I told him that that would not be correct. Greg, you've already been told. <laughs> <laughs> and I told Greg when he was hired as police officer and then chief that he would not get sick time that way when he was he already understands that correct it's, that's the way it's been wherever you worked at anyway as a police officer so it's 60 hours times whatever is what he's getting no 298 hours is what we owe him in sick time well I thought you said it was only 60. no 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 that's what the rule states like, oh I'm sorry I it says that a payment for unused sick upon death or retirement shall not exceed 60 days. Unless the 60 days, it be 60 times 8 be 480 60. hours. Unless the city says we'll let you carry over 10 because that's all you got. And then it says, but an officer who leaves employment for any reason other than retirement or death will forfeit all unused time. That will be our new employee book. So if they got sick, say Greg got sick, and he had to, and he had 200, whatever this guy, he could use those. Yes. But What's he could, there for? But if he quits, he doesn't, he, he doesn't get any. And right. if he retires, he gets up he to gets, 60. If he's full retirement. He, he can't say, right. I'm retiring, go work for another police right. department. Yeah. Okay, I understand. You had one officer that actually yeah. supposedly is completely retired that left that was, here, correct? Yes. He got it. it one, of them, one of them says he's retired, so you would have paid him. Not over 60, Clark. Clark said he's retired. So Clark, by the way this law is written, Clark would have got his hours because he's retired. Nobody else would have. Okay? I'll second it. Have a second on the motion. All in favor, make sure your voice is heard. Aye. No. Aye. Uh, Three to one. Okay. Make sure you vote right votes now. Huh? Yeah, three to one. Three to one. Okay. I think she's saying Alan. All right. We met in a meeting for general discussion. Some of you were in it. Some of you were not able to be in it with Stevens and Friday Eldridge and Clark. Brenda has got. We need to sign this. Yes, he's getting ready to go. Well, it's severance. Okay. That's right. And I crossed out sick. Friday Eldridge and Clark are looking at our city bonds. We have nothing to bring to the council tonight, but I have printed out, got Brenda to print out, we have six bonds that the city owes money on. Some of them go through 2037. And the one cent sales tax will be on forever. The half cent that's paying off sewer debt would if, unless the city does something would go away but they're going to look at and bring us a proposal back and then we're going to start some general meetings and uh, when they didn't know what we where we were and when they asked me what we owed for I didn't know so are these just done in packets Brenda? Yes, 
here you know all of the cities all of the cities bonds what the money's going to and how much is owed on them and this is just information for y'all to start learning and we'll get this out to the public as Friday Eldridge and Clark and Stevens comes back to us we'll probably have one more just a general meeting with them to see how we need to present it to the city of Glenwood. We're not looking for a sales tax increase, period. We're looking at is there a way we can do other things to help city general with the taxes that are in place, but the voters will still have to vote on. But we don't have anything to bring to you tonight other than we wanted to let you know we have started meeting with the bond attorneys and they're going to come back with suggestions for us. And please don't get it run down in town that we're not, there's nothing here. If anybody said anything about it, we're meeting with them Nothing has been made until they bring us suggestions back. It's too late. It's already on Facebook. Right? Well, I know it is, and that's why I'm trying to get it. That's fine. That's why I'm trying to get I'm trying to make everybody understand. We don't have an opinion, but I needed to look at what how much money the city owed in each of the bonds and what we pay off. Because if you look at the natural resource bond issues, where we've got all our money, all of our money but the we're highway to part. Ourselves. Ourselves. We're trying to educate ourselves. Like if you see that, it says we're paying a one and a half or two and a half percent interest. Natural resource charges a one percent service fee, so it's actually one percent more than any of the interest is showing. And with Stevens, if they say they'll get you if they really bond issue at some time, don't know what we're going to. And they said three and a half percent. It's three and a half percent. It doesn't have a service fee like natural resource does. So, but they're going. to, The lawyers from Friday Elders and Clark are going to come down and and Stevens. Brenda, when did you get them all the information they asked for? For the last three days, I have been sending her stuff. So she's about got all the information, the law, the Friday. The ordinances, all the... So they're looking at that, and we will get a... You people out here in the audience, how do you all think this would need to be brought to the public? So it's wide open, everybody, do you want to put... How do you want to discuss... I want to have one meeting with them without a lot of people in here to see if there's any need in getting them, and they say there's a need in re-looking at this. So how do y'all think to keep everybody open-minded, no sales tax increase, period? We're not talking about that. We're talking about some of it can be re and some of it's tied to bond issues. You're not moving. The, the half cent to the street repair, uh, I mean, for the sewer that goes to 2037, it's dedicated to that. The only way you might get something on that is if there's more money coming in that's going against the needed note payment because you're now getting the sales tax off of uh, internet that's really raised the sales tax revenue coming in up. That's why they think we need to look at this. It was about two hundred something thousand last year they showed us, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. More, yeah, more than in the two one cent yeah. was that much. Yeah. The cent and a half was Three hundred and something thousand increase. Seven hundred seventy-seven thousand dollars. We got eight hundred and seventy-one thousand dollars for the one percent last year. That's way more than we've ever had. Yes, Joe. Billy, it sounds like you're asking for suggestions how to present it to the public. Just present it as we are looking at refinancing because anybody that's got a bunch of loans understands if you refinance twelve loans into one or two, you're going to save money. There's, we've got such a cheap interest rate with natural resource that may or may not be feasible because we've got, even with 1%, we've got some 1.75% loans with a 1% service fee on But that may or may not, but you, you're you going to have to consolidate and pay off old notes if you're going to move any money, but that's something they'll bring to us and talk. And there's nothing been made. And do you want to put, if you move the sales tax, you want it to be 100% dedicated? Or, for instance, if you put something in City General, you just want to say City General, or you want to say so much water, to, uh, street department, so much, not street, City General would be police and fire, and City General would be the three areas if you moved anything in there. Do you want to do that? But that's all discussion we got to have. I just want to make you all aware we're working yeah. on that. It's a shame that the City of Glenwood has not put anything in the budget for our own local fire department. And that's just one of the things that we're looking at is can we reallocate different money? I mean, the same money, but in the right areas that we're needing it. Because the only thing that we're getting for the fire department is from the rural. Is that right? And then the trucks ain't getting no younger. 
No. Am I understanding y'all to say that, that uh, okay. am I understanding y'all to say that you, in doing this, you will look at the possibility of changing the focus of some of the taxes? There'll be no new taxes. No new taxes. But the money might be directed differently. That's yes. what we're trying okay. to look and at. And that's up to the people if they'd want to redirect it under what Stevens is going to bring to us. Stevens and Friday Eldridge Clark are going to suggest and they, they're going to need some input from us of whether you'd want the general fund to be designated as the money being like all the other stuff is specific or just let it go into general or blah, 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 blah. I don't even know what all I'm talking about yet. But since we've had a meeting with them, everybody needs to know we are meeting with them, but there's no discussion about raising taxes, period. Not going, as long as I'm here, that's not going to be talked about. Maybe a redistribution of some money if we can. And we're going to see what our debt service is in the income coming in to see what they sell as we do. We don't know that yet. Yes, Rick? Can you maybe put it in the paper for its assets and deficits and how much is coming in? We will, as we have meetings with them yeah. before we are ready to put it in the paper, we we'll need to get some public meetings. We'll have public meetings and they'll all be discussed. And then when the general public decides what they think is best to sell on the ballot, Friday Eldridge Clark, We'll do whatever everybody thinks. I don't know what's best. They don't know what's best because they don't know the numbers. But we are looking at that, and they think that there's some stuff that can be done to help without a tax increase. It will have to be voter voted on. The one-cent sales tax will never go away. It's there permanent. The half-cent sales tax is paid on the sewer debt. will pay off in 2037. It could go away. The one-cent will never go away. It's, it's locked down forever. It's going to be a city tax. And it's unless y'all change in the wording of it the way you wanted to do it, you could redistribute it, but it's the tax will be there. You're not going to vote it. The one cent you're not going to vote off. The half cent you're not going to vote off to 2037. But you might, I don't know what their suggestion is going to be, you might look at putting it all together and refinancing it all and then free up some money. I don't know yet. We don't know those answers. But if anybody says anything to anybody, Nowhere in this is the council looking at a tax increase, period. And then we're going to be looking for city input, and we'll need to have three or four public meetings on it as we get on into it. And there's some deadlines that they backed into this thing to have it work when in effect by next year. You got to be out so many days before. And if we're going to do this, you got to have a what? What in 120 days? You got to have the ordinance done and ready to pass ahead of a certain. There's only four time frames you can vote on sales tax. We'd try to have it ready for the October, I think, election if we were going to do it so you could have it done and approved and then the January money could be reallocated if what whatever the suggestion What we're trying to do is. is keep from having to ask. I mean, it's almost like having two accounts at the bank and bouncing checks on this account that, and this account just them calling you and saying, hey, we're going to insure you up to. Yeah, I'll give everybody a CD. You know, we got, we got money going in. This account when it'd be nice for a little bit of when this account, but it has to be reallocated by the voters, not the way I understood Stevens. Right there is all the city CDs today. I don't think I gave you all that. Okay. That's all I have tonight. I need a next meeting night. Yes, ma'am. And it was twice as much as usual. And I called her and she was so kind to me. I thought, the reason I called her is I honestly thought they had not, not took my payment out of this month. I mean, I thought it was, and I didn't want my water turned off. And uh, she took the, I never even, when she told me it wasn't, that was fine. I mean, that's when we had to keep our water running, you know, because of, she said, wait, don't get off. I want to make sure you don't have a leak. So she's very conscientious of this with the leaks. And I wanted to brag on her. Thank you. <laughs> I'll make a motion we adjourn. We need a meeting next meeting day. And then we can adjourn. What, what time next month? Jimmy, what's your schedule? What do you want to meet? What, I'm good for the 14th. 14th, okay, for next month? Tuesday. 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 I can do it the 7th or the 14th. 14th, give them a little more time.
Yeah. We need to go on down as much because maybe we can get a good well, out of Clemson. Well, I can do it the 22nd, but it's Wednesday night. 14? Oh, Wednesday night. 14th. 23rd, that's a Thursday night. I mean, that's a lot of good yeah. Let's do it. The first one you said there. 14th? Yeah. That's a Monday, Tuesday night. Okay, 14th. Huh? 14th to be the next regular meeting. Do I have a motion to adjourn? I have, yeah, I'll make the motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.